Okay, awesome. Let's start then. Uh, so uh, this is a story of uh, on Discover Weekly, or uh, how autonomy saved one of Spotify's most loved features from being killed, or also how we accidentally fixed Mondays. Uh, more on that in a minute. So how many of you know what Spotify is? A streaming, music streaming app. Okay, almost everyone. How many of you know what Discover Weekly is? Okay, not everyone. So Discover Weekly is basically a feature of Spotify. That means that among all your playlists, uh, your user-generated uh, content playlists that you create uh, or that you choose to follow, uh, all of a sudden there's uh, something that pops up that's created by Spotify that's called Discover Weekly. It contains 30 songs uh, which you have never listened to before on Spotify. Uh, Spotify doesn't know what you have listened to outside of Spotify yet. So we'll see. And uh, these are uh, refreshed every week. So you get new 30 songs that you've never listened to before, but that, that there's a high chance that you like. It's personalized for you. So how does Spotify do all that? Well, first, uh, let's take a step back. Do you remember how you used to find music before Spotify? Something like this. This is uh, Amoeba Records in San Francisco, I believe. Uh, LA, this one. Okay, it's in San Francisco too, but maybe you recognize this from LA. And uh, yeah, you used to go to your record store, browse through all the records, and then Spotify came along and did this. Okay, you now have 30 million songs uh, that uh, you can search. Uh, and for me, who grew up with uh, Napster, Kazaa, and, and all these illegal piracy download things that were kind of uh, really awesome, uh, used to what you had to do before, but, but you always had to search for new things and see, oh, I wonder if this is available, and I hope the, the user that has this is on a fast connection so I can download it to this party and play it. So I immediately started typing things into Spotify when I first used it and realized, wow, this is super fast, they have everything, even my more obscure uh, artists that I listen to. This is really, really cool. Everything is on Spotify. I just created lot, tons of playlists. Then I showed it to my mom and dad, and they were like, uh, what, what, what do I put in the search field? I don't know. They were used to just tune into a radio station and, and be told what to listen to, really. Uh, well, what do you listen to? The Beatles? Ah, oh, they're not on Spotify uh, yet. It, we fixed that. Um, so, uh, to her, it was more intimidating than exciting with this uh, search box. So back at the headquarters at Spotify, we said, or the, the CEO and, and one of the founders, yay, we've nailed search and play, congratulations. But if you don't know what you want to listen to, our product is useless. It's great for uh, uh, evangelists and, and early adopters and so on, but for what we used to call lean-back users, the mainstream users, uh, we just couldn't reach them in the same way. We tried different ways of doing that. Uh, one was a radio feature that Spotify would have. You could select genres and, and, and decades and, and maybe 80s hip-hop and so on. Uh, you could uh, seed it with, with songs and artists or playlists and it would build radio stations based on that. But that didn't really fly either. Uh, my guess is that uh, people who like radio, they listen to the radio. So uh, We tried Discover with all these Pinterest, Netflix style recommendations. Uh, you listened to Of Mice and Men recently, want to try Motionless Invite. Uh, welcome to Lo Loserville, Son of Dork, uh, and so on. And this just went on forever and forever. And, and music, uh, music lovers at Spotify loved to just browse and see what was recommended and so on. Uh, but my mom, getting up in the morning, want to put on some music. The first thing she wants to do is not browse through an infinite amount of recommendations to see what's, what's up for me. So we had great recommendations, we believed, but we just couldn't surface them in a, in a frictionless way. But around 2015, two engineers at Spotify uh, thought that there must be a better way of doing this. They were working on the personalization team, and they had an idea. Uh, they brought in the product manager uh, uh, and pitched the idea. He immediately brought in the designer UX person who said, uh, uh, played the bad cop and, and said, why do we need this? It's so uh, bloated with features already, and th this can't possibly work for this and that reason. And, and 
yeah, it made them refine both their pitch and, and their idea. But it's really simple. It was just reusing lots of stuff that's already available uh, for Spotify developers by reconnecting the dots. Back then, we had uh, data on, on 75 million users who were using the product. Uh, we had uh, uh, algorithms that could put them into micro genres and say, this is probably similar to that one, and, and we could use that to, to make recommendations. We had a user interface that we knew people loved and understood, the, the playlist format, you're building your own mixtapes or listening to other people's mixtapes and so on. So they just reconnected these dots and used collaborative filtering and, and some other uh, fancy tricks uh, to make this work. So anyone here is a Discover Weekly user? Okay, let's say you, sir. Uh, maybe you believe that uh, you're this unique snowflake and the 20-song playlist that I've curated, uh, it's like it's so unique, no one else in the world has the same music uh, taste as I do. Uh, it turns out, of course, we can probably find thousands or thousands of people that have the exact same 20 songs. It's just that 80% uh, of them happen to have a song wedged in between two of your songs that you don't have. Hmm, there's a high chance that you might like that song. That's the basics of it. It's, it's more complicated in, in reality, but that's basically how collaborative filtering works. And then some uh, audio acoustic analysis, so you, you, you don't just play first heavy metal and, and then some uh, John Johansson jazz music and then uh, uh, metal uh, again, but, but yeah, uh, presenting it in a nice way. So, um, they said, we think this is a great idea, uh, is it okay, team, if we uh, just go on a sidetrack here and uh, uh, experiment a little bit with, with this idea? The team said, sure, uh, even though we have our main mission, we have uh, really, really clear metrics on what we're supposed to do. We want to we wanna get personalization that uh, has reach, uh, that, which means that more people are starting to use it, depth, the people who are using it is using it more, and retention they are coming back and again and again and again. So it was really, really clear what they were going after. So they started iterating a little bit, tried some different ideas, uh, threw a lot of things away, it got better, and, and finally after a couple of weeks, they had something that they thought were really cool. Remember, we're talking weeks, not months or, or years. So the team started using it, and uh, they said, cool, this is awesome, wow, uh, just one thing though, and we continuously improved and tweaked it and ran lots of different experiments. Uh, and uh, for instance, what should the cover art look like? Uh, but it, because it turned out that when we used uh, uh, a standard picture, uh, I think it was of an astronaut on the moon discovering things, kind of, uh, we thought that how, how will this stand out? How will you know that it's personalized for you? So someone came up with the idea, well, we have the Facebook integration, we can use the profile picture and, and just overlays it with Discover Weekly. So, so it's immediately known to you that this is something personal for me. And we, just, we didn't just guess, we actually tested all these ideas and tried to validate all the hypotheses we had. Uh, because uh, uh, Spotify back then saved some two terabytes of, of data on how user interacts uh, uh, with the client every day. So there was a lot of, of analysis to be done. And it turns out that by having the, the, the image of the person, it's a 10% lift in weekly average users. So, great idea, let's, let's do that. What's the right length? Mm, four hours a day. No, 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 remember, lean back users, two hours. And also, it turns out from user testing, with two hours, uh, it feels like each song is more unique and, and chosen for you. If it's like four hours and, and 100 songs, it's like, yeah, I don't know. How often should it be updated? Well, every week seems like a, a good cycle of, of people coming back and, and, and refreshing or using it again. If we get the recommendations a little bit wrong, should we err on the side of too familiar or too unfamiliar? Uh, probably too unfamiliar because we don't want recommendations like, oh, you listen to When I'm 64 with the Beatles, you should check out uh, A Day in Life. Well, you, you probably already listened to it, just not on Spotify. But again, we, because we always track the data, uh, a bug came out that actually served some semi-good uh, recommendations, things that you probably already had listened to and was, was too fam familiar to you. But through metrics, we saw that when fixing that bug, 
uh, we got uh, uh, the data was was worse, and and through user research we concluded that a bit of familiarity actually makes it less. Um, it's difficult to listen just to only new music that's totally unfamiliar to you. So so some good uh, familiar content actually uh, helped the algorithm. And then there were some some mishaps with the algorithm that we had to tweak and fix. We came up with a winning formula. Two hours of personalized music recommendations, refreshed every Monday morning, and delivered in a standard Spotify playlist, uh, and uh, the playlist image based on the user's Facebook account. So it was 100% uh, data informed, and no front-end development needed, uh, because we used the playlist. And this is interesting because this is one of the things where the UX person and designer said, you can never put a Spotify generated playlist into the user content generated area. Don't mess with that. It's a big design UX no-no. Apple Music had recently taken a lot of flack because they, uh, they had a deal with U2 and all of a sudden placed U2's new album in everyone's playlist in Apple Music and uh, people were really, really upset. So, so everyone at Spotify would say, no, 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 you can't do that. Uh, but the team said, yeah, we're going to try it, see what the numbers say. So now what? Let's make an employee release. And actually, before they made a, a, a big fanfare uh, employee release, they actually just started giving it to people. It popped up, in, and, and some people discovered it. And they watched the metrics internally. And they could see that it kind of got a, got a viral spread internally at Spotify. People picked it up and, and oh, what's this? And, and they actually started using it and coming back to it. Uh, and then we sent out an email to all of, of Spotify uh, describing what it was. Uh, a small neat trick was, whoa, there's a gap here. Uh, to put a, in the playlist description, you actually put a link to a Google form so people could just go and answer what they, the, they thought about it. The rest of Spotify started using it, loved it. Um, wow, what's this? Awesome, release it. It's as if my secret music twin put it together. Everything in it is so good. And we got really great survey results from the Google form. So, now what? Well, uh, the CTO has said that anyone can ship anything to 5%, no questions asked. So no permission needed. We didn't even have to inform anyone, just ship it. Start rolling it out to we're modest, 1%, still 700,000 people, so quite a few. And will the rest of the world like it? We'll find out. Ooh, nervous. Bam, watching the data, so user metrics came in really, really great. The primary metrics were all uh, doing really, really well. Uh, we actually got 1,500 uh, 100 survey responses, people uh, saying things. And, and of those 1,500, there were three people who said, why are you putting a playlist among my playlists? So we could safely say that that was, uh, uh, yeah, that was a, no, no reason for concern, really. Started watching the buzz on Twitter. Wow, it's scary how well Spotify Discovery Weekly playlists know me. Like former lover who lived through a near-death experience with me well. At this point, Spotify's Discovery Weekly knows me so well that if it proposed, I'd say yes. Discover Weekly on Spotify eliminates the need for a musically knowledgeable boyfriend. Now I can be single forever. So, yeah, pretty good feedback, I'd say. So, the conclusion was that we have a winner. But, unfortunately, there's a but, it didn't scale. Because it was Spotify, a single user with 75 millions of shared playlists, changed every week on the same day. And taking the Facebook picture, processing that, overlaying it, very, very expensive computational things. So we had to roll it back, uh, and uh, people were really upset and disappointed. Just like that, my Spotify Discover Weekly playlist was taken from me. I'm in mourning. I hope it returns soon. And this, again, senior engineers, architect, uh, everyone told the team, you can't do this with the playlist. It's not built to handle this. It won't scale. You should find another way. Don't do this. They did it anyway. And yeah, sure, the senior engineers could say, told you so. But the, the big difference was they knew now that they had a hit. So started sorting out the tech issues. Took a long time, a couple of months. Uh, involved several other teams. And, and really a, a, a big effort to do this. 
in any other company, if you would have to do this in order to even test the idea, there are so many places, so many instances where people would just say, no, this is a bad idea, we can't do it. But because the team had the clear metrics, they had the mission, they had the autonomy, they could actually just try it and, and show with evidence that, yeah, the idea actually works. So this is moving from the hippo way of prioritization, highest in paid uh, person's opinion, to real data and, and customer obsession. So we gradually rolled it out again, tweaked the marketing message, uh, used the, the user's own language in the launch, so it was Veckan's tips in Swedish. This turned out through A-B testing again and data that this was a bad idea. It was more like considered a product uh, uh, if it was in English. Uh, so we, we changed it back to Discover Weekly in all languages. Uh, we used the, the buzz from, from Twitter in the marketing campaigns uh, uh, because it, it was so strong in, in the videos and marketing campaigns we used. We tweaked the packaging, made it a little bit more polished and, and, and smooth, and then Discover Weekly was launched, reaches 1 billion tracks streamed in 10 weeks, which is huge. Uh, Monday mornings, I take a bath and listen to Discover Weekly. Got really excited and started crying a little because I realized tomorrow is Monday and Spotify is making me a new Discover Weekly. It's actually so sad how excited I get for a new Discover Weekly on Spotify every Monday. Hence uh, why we, uh, how we accidentally fixed uh, Mondays. People are now looking forward to Mondays instead of the opposite. And this is fun too. Tom Conrad. Okay, everyone is right. Discover Weekly is absolutely perfect. And the interesting fact is this is uh, the co-creator of Pandora, Spotify's biggest competitor at the time. So pretty huge success. And it's one, one of, still one of the most lovable features of Spotify. So uh, we believe that the ingredients of successful innovation is you put people and problems, clear problems, into a fail-friendly environment with cross-functional teams where you have enough slack to actually test things, where it's okay to throw things away and fail as long as you learn, uh, and where you have clear success metrics, a feedback infrastructure, and a user testing feedback loop that allows you to prove or, or disprove ideas really, really quickly. And then awesome new stuff will come out in the end. And since I started talking about this Discover Weekly thing, this is actually the first time I do it at a conference. And some of my colleagues did, did in the past, or ex-colleagues, I'm no longer with Spotify, I'm with Crisp. And then the last year, Daniel, the founder and, and CEO, in one of the rare interviews, actually was asked, you've had some pretty successful consumer rollouts, like the Discover Weekly personalized playlist. I would have killed that if it was just me, 100%. Why? why? Why would you have killed it? I never really saw the beauty of it. I questioned them two, three times. Are you sure you really want to do this? Why are we spending all this time and energy? For a while, we didn't give that team any more funding in terms of headcount, but they kept working on it anyway. All of a sudden, they shipped it. I remember reading about it in the press. I thought, oh, this is going to be a disaster. And then, obviously, it turned out to be something really successful. It's one of the most loved product features that we have. There are lots of things in this company that I didn't think were good ideas that turned into some of the best things, and then he goes on to list them. I think the power in that the CEO has this stance, everyone with seniority is saying, no, 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 bad idea, don't do it. And they still, because they believe in it, because it's easy and simple and, and low cost to actually try ideas, they could do it anyway. And otherwise, uh, Discover Weekly would have never seen the light of day. So the conclusion, innovation can't be forced, just enabled, encouraged, supported. Managers can't make it happen, but they can create an environment to support it and stop it from being killed. Thank you for your attention. I don't know if we have time for any questions. I think I made the mark exactly. I leave that to others to decide. Anyone has a question? I killed it when I said no. I don't have, okay. Yeah. So I was uh, just wondering, uh, where was this uh, autonomy part highlighted in all this journey? Uh, was it because you added the element of surprise in the product, or? Or was it that the the the, the team was trusted uh, to do 
Uh, the team was trusted anyway. to do yeah. it. Yeah. They were not uh, controlled by a backlog or by the highest in paid, uh, uh, income paid person's opinion or anything in the, in the prioritization. They were given clear uh, constraints, uh, a mission. These are the metrics you need to push. Now you use your, your skills and, and the existing systems, which they use to 100% basically, to just uh, repurpose them in different ways, experiment and innovate. And even though people were saying, no, 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 don't do it, bad idea, they still were autonomous to decide because they knew that they could experiment and quickly prove it or disprove it. Yeah. All right, I'm here for the rest of the conference and tonight if you want to chat with me or if you have other questions or comments, just feel free to do so. Thank you.